Hello, welcome back. Today I'm here with Jakob, Jakob Lehmann, great uh, conductor. What else do you do? You organize your own series now and we will <laughs> perform together in May. Yes. Tell us a little bit about you. Who are you and what exactly do you do? Um, yeah, I'm a conductor from Berlin, Germany. So I'm, you know, I've, I've always been in the city. I've always loved to be here and um, I'm working all over and with many different groups and, and um, artists. Um, and some years ago, I had the idea with some colleagues to just found my own chamber orchestra, which is in yeah. Rupert Berlin, um, which is the group that we will work together in, mm -hmm. in May for this concert in, in Linz at the Bruckner Linz. And we are also doing a new chamber music series in Berlin at the Klinker yeah. Lounge at Backfabrik, which is an exciting new venue for culture. I've music. been there a few weeks yeah. ago to, to visit you and to see what you're doing. And we're actually doing the first concert there. So Yes, yeah. so this this will be the Very launch of the series. So so it's great that Aaron has um, agreed to to launch this 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 series because it's To me, it's very important to just not do yet another series of concerts in a funky venue, but really to do something that is artistically interesting and, and of high quality and also yeah. bring something new to the cultural landscape of the city. What, what is your idea with that? You're originally from Berlin. I mean, there are many venues here. There is the Philharmonie, there is Concert House, there is, uh, I don't know, Boulet Saal, even smaller venues like the Piano Salon, Cristofori. And other things. What what is new about your series? What do you want to contribute? Well, first of all, it's you know it might sound a little bit selfish, but I want to present people that I like. I want to present musicians that I think are selfish. Would be if you say you want to present yourself. No? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but you know, I I very much <clears throat> like to perform music, but I also like to go to concerts. So yeah. I I want to put up. A series of concerts with people that have a collaboration with Eroica or will have you know projects in the future like 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 we do and I think it's first and foremost it's the idea to have something that is you know that that you can't get anywhere else in Berlin yeah, you know? yeah. and and uh, that the quality is really high and also the atmosphere in uh, at this menu at the Klinker Lounge is very you know it's It has this industrial, typical Berlin charm, but it also mm -hmm. has this kind of, you really feel like you, you, you go into a concert, so it's not it's What not exactly is the industrial charm? How does it look like? Well, it is, you know, the Backfabrik in Prenzlauer Berg. It's very near to Alexanderplatz and, you know, it's very well integrated in the city. Schönhauser Allee is, is around the corner. And the Backfabrik is this old, you know, 130-year-old uh, industrial complex, which which was a big bakery factory, basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the Klinker Lounge is basically in the basement of that factory, and it used to be the ice cellar, so ah, okay. where they kind of put stuff uh, to the oh. store. Yeah. So the Klinker Lounge is basically the, the storage facility of, of, mm -hmm. of that factory. And it, it is very, you know, visually very simple, but very striking. It has this kind of whitewashed uh, clinker, you know, the kind of, stones mm -hmm. in the wall. Okay. That's um, where the name comes from. Exactly. And also it has a very good acoustics, especially for chamber music or for mm -hmm. solo recitals like we will do on January 13th. And exactly. Don't you know, miss it. We'll <laughs> mention it in the end of the video. Absolutely. No, it's it's something that I think has, you know, the advantages of a great concert venue in terms of acoustics, but also has the charm of something where you go to spend a nice evening and you don't yeah, feel yeah. that you have to dress up or you don't feel that you have to kind of behave in a certain yeah. way. But still your network and your, your circle is a lot of uh, very great artists and a lot of music lovers. So I'm sure the audience will be have a good foundation and then there will become other people as well. We yeah, hope so. We no, hope so. no, it's a lot a... of them. You have already sold a lot of tickets, you told me before. Yeah, and then you have you have also a great piano there now, right? Yes, we are very lucky that um, the company Bechstein has agreed to, you know, be a sponsor, be a partner of this um, of this concert of, of of your recital there, and mm -hmm. they will provide us with a wonderful grand piano that uh, I think you will like very much. Maybe you know it already. Maybe it's one of the pianos of Bechstein that you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that is that is really important that you know if you decide to put on a concert 
with a piano, you have to have a great instrument. And I'm very happy yeah. that Bechstein is, uh, yeah, is a part just, of this. I've just released a video as well where I talk about the challenges of a concert pianist that, uh, you know, you always have to play on a different instrument. Yes. Um, if you haven't seen it, check it out here. And um, yeah, I mean, it's very cool that I know that you, Jakob, you have organized a really good instrument and I know Bechsteins very well and I love the pianos. So I'm really much looking forward. We do a program with a lot of dances. Mm -hmm. It's a very uh, New Year's kind of program. Yeah but also with some serious music with Enescu's third suite, uh, which I think will sound really, really good in this environment because the end is with, you know, with this choral and the bells and yeah. the bells will sound really cool. I think in this, in this, mm -hmm. uh, in this basement. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. So what, if I, if I may ask you, what is, what is, do you have a personal, because, you know, the other pieces in the program, you know, Schumann and Liszt and also Grünfeld, yeah, who was yeah, yeah, yeah. a contemporary of, of Johann Strauss, is of course. But what does the music of Enesco mean to you? What do you like about it? Well, um, many of you might know this. Uh, I am from Austria, but my dad is from Romania. So I also have Romanian roots. And Enescu is obviously the most famous composer. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you go to Bucharest, for example, every street is called Enescu, <laughs> every house is called Enescu, and every school is called Enescu. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like going to Salzburg, where everything it's is named Mozart. Mozart. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, he's really, really famous there, and he is, I believe, one of the most underrated composers. Mm. People always say, yeah, Enescu, and they play a few pieces. The octet is being mm -hmm. played, also the Romanian Rhapsody. Yes which I often play as an encore, mm -hmm. which is also very virtuoso and yeah. very um, flashy piece. But um, he wrote much more than that, not just these two pieces. And um, it's very, very specific kind of language, mm -hmm. very specific kind of expressing emotions. He is much more direct than uh, any other composer I know. Uh, it's almost sometimes almost... Um, yeah, there's really no filter. There's uh -huh. really no filter because because in our tradition, you know, we have always, uh, the, we have the form, we put things into a form. Um, and which is really interesting because Schumann also was someone who was going to the limits. Yeah. Uh, also with this carnival, for example, mm -hmm. that I'm playing, uh, he sometimes breaks up the bars. There is sometimes a 4-4 four, four bar with, within a, a three. Uh -huh. uh, three four um, piece yes. without even mentioning it, you know. So it's it's, it's like really going. Uh, so typically, typically romantic. He just follows his emotions. He just follows his... emotions, yeah. and there is also a piece because he writes everything on these, you know, letters, um, like S C B, which is uh, H in German, A. And A flat, which is um, as, so A S also in German, yeah. which is named after this little, um, this little town Asch in German, which is Bohemia in English. And and there he had his first fiance, which was not Clara Schumann, but uh, a daughter of an, uh, someone from nobility, I think. Oh, interesting. And okay. uh, he like he 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 also mentions a lot of uh, people from his life in this music. In there code, is, basically. Yeah, in code. There's yeah. uh, uh, Karina, uh, which is uh, Clara. Yes. Estrella is also someone, maybe maybe ah. an affair he had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And there is um, this piece also, um, uh, Lettre d'Ensante, mm -hmm. um, which is after this uh, after these letters. And also there is one piece called Sphinx in the middle of the piece, which has no notation. They're just like notes. Ah, in um, so the, yeah. there's just a few notes, but there's no bar, no rhythm, and no uh, tempo, nothing. Interesting. Uh, it's it's just there, and no one knows if they should play this or not. Uh -huh. There are some pianists who just play the notes randomly. It's like this, you know. Yeah. And then the next piece, uh, it's called Happy Who Starts Exactly. With these notes again, uh -huh. which is really, really cool. Uh, and I made the decision, uh, which is uh, often a surprise to the audience, but now I will officially explain it. <laughs> I made the decision to uh, pluck the strings with these notes. Uh -huh. So I have like this uh, 
like it's just as a, as a memory of these notes. Yeah. And then the next piece starts uh, subito prestissimo and it's then and it's, it's back to the real back world. to the real world. That's yes. cool. Yeah, Schumann is, is is one of those composers who has so many layers, and we we tend to only know you know his official side and his yeah his public side, but there's so so much stuff. To discover about and then, then going back to uh, Enescu, he's pushing it even further you know like there's in Schumann there's still he's like breaking the form mm -hmm. but, but Enescu, still is form. sometimes yeah. there is not even uh -huh. a form yeah it's really just pure emotion and that's right. where where the, the music uh, continues so so tell me about list the the Rigoletto paraphrase do you mm -hmm. do you like opera do you often go to the opera what 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 does this mean to you i have to admit that i'm not going to the opera very often oh and oh. it's it's something <laughs> that is really overwhelming to me yes. you know, i okay. love theater yeah i i go to the theater regularly i love concerts mm -hmm. symphonic music as well even big symphonic music yeah. And I love also songs, mm -hmm. or even if a singer sings arias. Yes. But all, everything together is just uh, for my mind, it's difficult to process it. Uh -huh. Because I never know, okay. should I now watch what they're doing? Should I listen to the music? Should I follow the, the plot? You know, it's a bit too much for me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so I prefer to go to concerts or theater. Or <laughs> <laughs> okay, to me, for me, opera is one of the greatest <clears throat> art forms. And, you know, as somebody who really loves especially Italian opera, and I, I, I do a lot of Italian opera. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the music of Giuseppe Verdi is, yeah, is yeah, very yeah. important to me. And also Rigoletto is this piece which is so well known. I mean, it's one probably one of the, let's say, it's it's among the top 10 most performed yeah, operas in yeah. the world. So Liszt's take on it is, of course, very special because he was, he was an opera fan. Mm -hmm. But he was not an opera composer. But of course, he played these paraphrases, and he knew yeah, yeah. he knew um, many great singers of his era. So he was really part of the tradition in in a way like Chopin, right? Yeah. So that's why I take this piece. I, I can play the opera without all the overwhelming well, <laughs> without having to but, go. <laughs> that, which is really great. On the other hand, as you know, there is this uh, quartet, mm -hmm. this um, Bella Figlia dell'amore, which has four voices in it. Yeah. And all of them can sing at the same time with all the different agendas, uh, yes, different, different emotions, emotions. Yeah. which is only possible in opera. Like in yeah. real life, if you would have four people in a fight or in, a, in an argument or even in a discussion, they could never talk, talk at, at the, the same, same time, time. Yeah. in great harmony. Yes. And that is what, what opera makes possible. And this quartet from, from Rigoletto, that is, that is the basis for this paraphrase, is, is you know, People call it the first time in opera that four different emotions are being presented at the same time. So it's really important yeah, also yeah, for the art yeah. form of opera, and it's a gorgeous piece. And Liszt adds one million notes. Of course he does. <laughs> <laughs> I have already uploaded the, the Rigoletta paraphrase. If you want to uh -huh. watch that as a trailer, you can do that here. And then still, of course, you should come to the concert and listen to the full. Yes, full I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm getting really excited now because, you know, learning about the background of these pieces is, is always so great. Yeah. But tell me about Grünfeld. You, we have talked about your Romanian roots. Now let's yeah. talk about your Austrian, Austrian roots. roots or everything is put together. Is that the Viennese? German, the yeah. German music? Because I live in Berlin, yeah. the Austrian roots. The, it is uh, very Viennese. Yes. yes. Grünfeld was a dear friend of Strauss and a fantastic pianist. Yeah. And he uh, tra transcribed a lot of uh, Strauss waltzes mm -hmm. and music. And in this uh, paraphrase, uh, Soiree de Vienne, there are melodies from uh, Fledermaus and other famous uh, famous pieces. So it's, uh, yeah. Great. It's, it's... For me, as somebody who, who, who loves uh, historical informed performance mm -hmm. and who does a lot of, you know, research into rom romantic performance practice, Grünfeld is especially interesting because there's so many recordings of him himself playing the piano. Oh, and yeah. that is really something that can tell you, of course, about piano playing, but yeah, also yeah. about how people played actually waltzes and, and the Strauss yeah, yeah, yeah. music. Back so he in played the his own music. He recorded a I few. I think I listened to yes. one of them, yeah. And he was, of course, you know, this, this, this um, today we would say a salon pianist, mm -hmm. but his his touch on the piano, his his way of playing is so delicate and so charming. You really should check this out. It's it's, yeah. it's really fascinating. You're, you're doing this series, um, and you offer also drinks to the audience. Yes. Is your idea also to do create some kind of salon atmosphere, or totally different? Absolutely no. I I love this idea of um, 
of musical salons where you just come together with friends and colleagues mm -hmm. and people that maybe are in town for a few days and they, yeah, they yeah. come and they, they present a piece, they play, you know, they sing a song, they play the piece. Um, because I think what we, what we lost in, in our great concert performance um, culture that we have is a little bit the leisurely aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Because people first and foremost go to a concert to have a great time. In yeah. my opinion, if I go to a concert, I'm going because and it is still entertainment. It is absolutely. It is. Yeah. It is. It is entertainment, and that doesn't that doesn't put it down in terms no. of what, what what it's worth. But I think for 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 what I want to do with this concert series is that people go there knowing they will have a great time. They will listen to fantastic music, but they also can do it in an atmosphere where they can enjoy a glass of wine or orange juice or whatever you want, and and just have many of these kind of sens sensual pleasures in a way mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. same time. And I think that can only enhance your musical experience if you're there and you feel at home and you feel yeah. Yeah. like you're treating yourself in a little uh, in, a, in a way. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this experience. Yes, I'm looking your forward series. to have uh, to, to having our one there and to to listen to this great program and well, where can where can people buy the tickets the tickets are um i'm gonna do this here yes <laughs> <laughs> you can buy tickets under uh, this link and it's eroica berlin it's on the website of eroica berlin which is the chamber orchestra that that is in residence at the klinker lounge mm -hmm. in in the backfabrik um in berlin prenzlauer berg mm -hmm. you'll find the date you'll find the program you'll find the address yeah and the so tickets if you are from link. berlin um, and you love music, or if you want to do a great vacation with great music in Berlin, buy the tickets now and Jakob and me will both be there and also talk to you personally after the concert. We'll have a great uh, friendly atmosphere yes. with drinks after the concert so we can meet each other. So don't miss it and wish you a great week and see you there. <laughs>